how many Bitcoins would you spend to buy pizza for the whole office? I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. And then I'm gonna try to start and write a book about Bitcoin. Hi, I'm Molly. I'm here with Cointelegraph, and we're also speaking to Bobby Lee, who's the co-founder of BTCC and a board member at the Bitcoin Foundation. So first of all, welcome to Blockshare Europe. Thank you, Molly. My first question for you is if you could tell me a little bit about what you're doing at BTCC now um, in regards to regulation in China, how the mission has changed from when you first started and up until today. Yeah, so BTCC actually got acquired. We uh, investment group in Hong Kong acquired the company late last year and closed early this year. So there's a new management in place. So I've stayed on as advisor to the company. So I'm just helping them out on some strategic projects. So in terms of their actual day-to-day -day stuff, I don't have uh, that visibility to share. So what are you doing now then instead? So I, this, is, this is my gap year, taking some time <laughs> off. I'm speaking at conferences. I'm gonna play some poker at the World Series oh, of wow. poker this year in Las Vegas. And then I'm gonna try to start and, and write a book about Bitcoin. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. What, um, what inspired you to wanna write a book about Bitcoin? You know, I, um, I think this year I finally have more time on my hands. I've always wanted to potentially write a book, be an author, and uh, given, all the knowledge about Bitcoin and crypto that I've accumulated over the last few years, and I have a certain insider's perspective on this crypto cryptocurrency, uh, and having a lot of experience speaking at conferences, you know, talking to people, answering their questions, I have a unique perspective into what kind of questions they ask. So I, I want to put that all together into a book, and basically it will be a, for the general audience, for the uninitiated, if you will, to explain the impact of Bitcoin, why it's meaningful to our society, and mm -hmm. what the future is. So yeah. what's the question you get the most asked at the conferences then? Uh, uh, in crypto conferences, people ask, people ask me about what's my price prediction, mm -hmm. what assets I hold, what crypto coins I hold. And people also ask about, um, they ask why is Bitcoin valuable when governments don't endorse it, or they, that's, that's a sort of negative perspective. The non-believers think that for crypto to have a future, governments have to endorse it or support it. So, so those are the questions I get. So speaking off of that, you've said in some interviews that one of the reasons Bitcoin is not a bubble is because it has inherent utility. Could you expand more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Bitcoin's utility is that, uh, now again, the utility is only to the eye of the beholder who mm -hmm. finds it useful, but Bitcoin is very, very useful as a form of payment for people who are separated by distance or by time. Mm -hmm. So meaning that if, if people wanna send large or small amounts of money, when they're geographically apart, usually long distances across time zones, across countries and jurisdictions, Bitcoin is a very efficient way to send value across. As long as both people value Bitcoin and understand that it's a, its market price varies. So if they would agree on a price and they can send the amount of Bitcoins and get that invoice or payment paid. Mm -hmm. So it's very useful. And Bitcoin's also useful for, for sending through time. If you think about it, Bitcoin investors, people like myself and possibly you and others who invest in Bitcoin, what we're really doing is we're saying, let me put in $1,000 into this Bitcoin machine mm -hmm. and I will send it to my future 10 years later. It's an interesting way to think about it. Or five years later or two years later, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work for the short term because then it's very volatile. If I send it to me, a week later, I open it up and sell the Bitcoin a week later, it might not achieve $1,000. But certainly five years, 10 years, now we're talking where it could be worth a lot. So that's, that's the investment sort of through time aspect of Bitcoin. So do you consider yourself a Bitcoin purist? Because you said once in an interview that you wouldn't touch any other <laughs> altcoins, but you did say, maybe I'll change my mind in the future. So yeah, have yeah. you changed your mind? Yeah, so Bitcoin, uh, I, I've said that many times, in, both in recent times and, and over the years. Mm -hmm. I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, I, said, I think that's what they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be a purist, but I, I definitely, the only four coins I have and hold are Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, mm -hmm. Litecoin and Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So those are the only things I hold. So everything else I consider an altcoin and, I, and of course the tokens themselves, I don't touch. These centralized tokens issued by companies and groups, I don't touch, yeah. Um, going back to the beginning about your work for BTCC, 
So you've had experience working in China, and now in the past few months, there's been a lot of really strict regulations that have been forcing crypto companies out. Do you think that in the future, China will ever be more open and welcoming to the crypto community? It's possible. I've said this before, and sometimes people take it the wrong way. So I think China certainly has room to change their mm -hmm. policies. Uh, it could happen within a few months, or it could take a few years, or it could take decades. Mm -hmm. So to, you know, China is a mystery when it comes to regulation and policies. Uh, because of the form of government being in, being being that kind of government, uh, they, it's not very transparent in terms of what they want to do with with uh, crypto. So nothing's permanent in China. Even mm -hmm. like the one-child policy, you know, eventually got overturned after many decades. Mm -hmm. So the Bitcoin, the outright ban on Bitcoin exchanges, the, the lack of licensing, the lack of regulation, the criminalization of some of the activities around Bitcoin. I think, I think that's. That's here to stay for the short term, but it's hard to say if that will get lifted anytime soon. Do you see any countries that are doing it right with regulation? Um, n none of the big countries, or none of the big sort of popular, mm -hmm. famous countries are doing it right yet. I think uh, I think it's a very tough terrain to navigate, if you will. So uh, some of the small countries who are more risk prone. They're doing it right. They're doing it by the laissez-faire approach. You know, they're 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 welcoming companies to set up jurisdiction mm -hmm. in that country and to set up uh, entities and licensing and all that. So uh, some 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 are doing it more aggressively than others. And I expect and that's just that's just how things are, uh, because different countries will choose different paths. Whether they take a strong adoption approach or whether they take a more reserved sort of a wait and see approach. I think China's of the wait and see approach. All right, um, and the last question. Really recently, it was the celebration of Bitcoin Pizza Day. Yeah, So yeah. my question is, what's your favorite kind of pizza? My favorite pizza is pepperoni, pepperoni and cheese. And have you ever used Bitcoin to buy a pizza? I haven't used, so what we did do is we, uh, last year at BTCC, I think we spent like, I think it was, we, we did it two years in a row, and they, they did it again this year. It was like, how many Bitcoins did we spend to buy pizza for the whole office? <laughs> and at one point, it's like over five Bitcoins, and last year, it may have been like three or two or three Bitcoins. And this year, certainly less than one Bitcoin. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So it's been amazing to see to see that. Yeah, coming from, what is it, 10,000 Bitcoins 10, for 10,000 Bitcoin, Bitcoin for two, two pieces, yeah. yeah. Now down to just less than one Bitcoin to feed the whole office, right? Yeah. All right, great. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you, Molly. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.